big big week for the AFC South again. This 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 AFC South is going to be something to watch. Oh yeah, uh, we're about as hot and cold as Katy Perry in two thousand five. Um, it, it is it is pretty ridiculous. Um, everybody in this division is the epitome of the phrase Jekyll and Hyde mm-hmm. because it's such a week to week basis on what team is trotting out on the field. I feel like the the two teams that were not expected to do anything are the least Jekyll and Hyde. I feel like the Colts and the Texans, you can expect, I guess, more consistency from them at this point. I mean, yeah. Uh, I think we all understood that the Titans were going to be in a state of change and fluctuation a little bit this season because mm-hmm. <laughs> the offensive line is so new. But... Um... Yeah, I mean, the Colts and the Texans have been at least consistent. Uh, after the couple bumps for the Texans, they kind of smoothed it out a little bit. The defense, while it wasn't perfect today, was still um, – you, you know, you hold somebody to 21 points, you expect that that's a winnable game. So, yeah, uh, they're doing their jobs. And, and the Colts are the same way. The Colts are playing phenomenal defense. And they're they're just hoping to get some some sort of complimentary offense and maybe a quarterback that's not made out of glass. I don't know. Yeah, that'd be really nice to have a quarterback that's not made out of glass. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's. I guess we'll we'll talk about the AFC South games more than I guess we'll dive in a little bit to the other ones. But I want to cover those are the important games. Yeah. Um, Naturally. most competitive division in football. Yeah. By record, actually, maybe. Eh, maybe the AFC North too, but uh, let's cover the division matchup first. Colts Texans or Colts Titans. Um, yep. This was a, uh, I mean, th- listen, this is a battle. The Colts haven't won. I think it's been seven, or they lost six of the last seven against Tennessee after owning them with Andrew Luck for many years. Um, yep. This was kind of considered. It's a new era for the Colts moving into Anthony Richardson. Uh, Richardson gets hurt on the design runs, which I have said time and time and time and time and time again, why are you designing runs for the kid? He's comfortable in the pocket. He's clearly showed poise in the pocket. Why, why is he not just using his legs to extend the play and, and be athletic? But Shane Steichen loves to do that. He just loves to do it. And he loves taking chances like a well-known quarterback whisperer. That was the Colts head coach just a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I, I think you, a lot of people, when they heard Steichen was coming and then the moment that, uh, Anthony Richardson was drafted, everybody was like, Oh, thank God. We got a guy who knows how to handle a mobile quarterback and which is true. But I mean, I don't, I don't know that anybody was necessarily expecting Anthony Richardson to just, you know, get a concussion and miss a game. And then, um, now he's got this AC sprain. Yeah. Uh, which is a blessing that it's an AC sprain. Yeah, it could have been significantly worse the way he was tackled. But yeah. um, I was actually talking to the Colts fan on my podcast channel about it. And um, I, I was just like, why didn't you slide? Harold Landry, he, technically, yes, he was tackled from behind. But he knew where Harold Landry was from the moment the ball was snapped. Yeah. That was the first person he saw in another uniform. And he was in the hip pocket of Anthony Richardson the entire time until he was tackled. Slide. Avoid unnecessary contact. Yes. And I don't know if nobody's taught him that yet, but that needs to be a lesson at some point. Bring in um, who's what's the is there a professional baseball team in Indiana? Uh, there is a minor league team. They brought they did it with Andrew Luck too. the Indianapolis Indians. Um, OK. They called in a sliding coach, and they got a slip and slide for okay. Andrew Luck when he was there, and they taught him to slide. All right, is the class is in session? Bring the slip and slide back. Anthony Richardson's the new pupil. Let's let's make it happen, because yeah. any like he's electric. If you can keep him on the field, he's one of those quarterbacks that at least so far has given a spark to the offense, even when he's not being one hundred percent accurate or even close to it. Um, mm-hmm. So if he can find ways of not breaking himself, I think he's going to have a pretty solid career. And I was the guy not too long ago that was like, this guy's going to be out of the league in three years. Nobody, I said, 
I said the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm fully aware that I got to eat some crow, but at the same time, um, this yeah. his career could be very quickly derailed if he doesn't learn to take care of himself. I think it's it's that um, there are Colts fans out there that are still pretty delusional about his injury. And, you know, his obvious injury history after he's played four games. You know, they're they're saying that they're saying, oh, it's just un, an unlucky streak. I mean, any any time a quarterback, if if your running quarterback gets hurt past the line of scrimmage on a design run, I mean that's I, I see that as the coaching, the yeah. coaching's fault, and and obviously Richardson's fault for not sliding, but that's more something that needs to be taught. Yeah. And he's comfortable in the pocket. He's shown poise in the pocket where he's able to stand in there. I mean, he took a hit from fucking Aaron Donald and delivered a dart last week. Yeah. He also came up limping in the game last week too. It was a short time, but I count that as a, as a possible injury. He's been injured in every game he's played every single game, at least for a very small amount of time. And there becomes a point where it's like, it isn't luck anymore. This is, they're being reckless. And I I feel like they're being reckless at this point. This was the injury that kind of put it over the top and we're four games into the kid's career. Yeah. Oh man, that sucks. <laughs> that yeah. sucks. Uh, you you like again? He's electric. Like there's there's not many people other than outside uh, maybe Lamar who can kind of bring that juice to any offense. And um, it, it's it's just going to be a shame if he doesn't learn how to slide, learn when he can and can't avoid hits. But. You know, it's going to be all for naught if uh, Steichen's just going to lean on the design QB runs anyway. Which, yeah, you know, maybe he thinks he's coaching for uh, Chicago. I think I really think he's coaching for Philadelphia. I think he thinks that all those players automatically come with him because yeah. that's how that's how they're treating it. And yeah. you know, I I hate I hate to be this negative guy on a win. Like what I'm supposed to be celebrating a win. But I haven't really felt like Steichen's play calling and decision making has been, you know, up to par. I, he's he's clearly built a great locker room that get the guys love each other. I mean, they still accepted Jonathan Taylor with open arms after everything that that happened. They yeah. accepted him with open arms. But this is really, really, really scaring me because this is what we said about Frank Reich. We said he is a quarterback whisperer, and we've said the same thing about. Shane Steichen. Shane Steichen yeah. comes from the Frank Reich coaching tree, came from Nick Sirianni. Um, and his his play calling and decision making, he I mean, he's terrible with time management. He does not care about timeouts whatsoever. Yeah. He always tries to do that little, you know, try to jump him, get him to jump. Maybe yeah. works 5% of the time on average. And you look at, I mean, at the at the end of the first half today, they could have easily just taken a field goal. You go up seven heading into the half, and you walk away. You you know you didn't get it. You didn't score a touchdown, but no, they go for it and you lose the points. Yeah, I feel like that's happened a couple times at least now with Steichen already. I don't care that we're three and two. There's been a lot of mismanagement. I mean, last week against the Rams, you know, you're you're down eight with eight minutes to go. You get the ball. You don't try to run the clock down because that two point conversion isn't a guarantee to get the two point conversion whatsoever. You try and score as quickly as you can, even kick a field goal. You're down five. Your defense is playing great. Get a stop. And then you'll have the ball with two minutes and two timeouts. You go to you go and score and win the game there. They I think Steichen completely screwed that up. He tried to run the clock down, which you know you can't run the clock down with, with seven minutes. You know, it's very difficult, especially with the timeouts that the Rams have. Yeah. I I don't get it. I, I don't I don't really see the love for his play calling. If he took if he took it away and was just a locker room guy, then I would say, Great, this is a perfect setup. Get Eric the enemy in there. Yeah. Get him fucking in there and be half head coach and just be <laughs> the offensive head coach. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Jesus. Yeah. Uh Jeff, the Colts fan on my show, he for basically since like week two. He's been commenting on how inconsistent Steichen has been with certain game management aspects, not calling a timeout, 
Uh, I can't remember the particular instance, but there's been several times in the chat during game day where mm -hmm. Jeff's just like, why are you not kicking the freaking field goal? What the hell? Take the points, take the points. You got one of the best kickers in the league and we paid him all this money. And yeah. he just set a record at last week or, you know, at this point it was last week, but um, you know, four 50 yard field goals in one game, the guy's good. And for whatever reason, I feel like maybe Steichen's just not trying to lean on the kicker too much. Maybe he's trying to put more pressure on the offense on purpose, maybe. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. it's that's a that's a good theory, I guess. It's it's kind of like what was it? I, the the Flash movie. The director came out and said, "No, the CGI is supposed to look like that. You know, yeah. the CG is supposed to look bad because he's in." The flat, you know, he's in the whatever flash zone or something. Can't yeah. remember the specific name off the top of my head. Yeah. It's like, guys, like, I don't, the, I, I love Bill Belichick. Like, that's, that's one thing. I'm like, if the Colts could get Belichick, I'd be so much happier. I don't care about their record right now. Their team is horrible. It's, it's just not a good team. Yeah. But I still think if you give Belichick a great team, he's going to go out and win ball games no matter what because he's smart. Yeah. And I don't think Steichen is like impossible to reach those levels for him. I think there's a lot of these bumps and bruises he's taken because he's uh, he's a rookie head coach. He, he's mm -hmm. got to learn some things on the fly and he's going to his growing pains are going to be a lot more pronounced than some of maybe the rookies, per se, yeah. who might mess up on a block and it might not affect the play a whole a whole lot. But, you know, he mismanages the two minute drill and everybody in national media is just like who is this joker what, 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 what is this what is this i don't think he's anywhere near the uh what was uh what was the coach for the broncos last year oh nathaniel hackett yeah he's nowhere he's nowhere near that i won't give him that designation whatsoever no. uh that that's a pure insult but um no he's he, he's taken his lumps so far and i think I think one of the good things that he does is at least he owns up to that. And he's like, you know, pretty consistently been like, I got to be better in those situations. Yeah. Which is. That's why I'm, I'm trying not to freak out because I know, I mean, everyone knows when your football team's playing football, no matter what, you're like, I want to win. Like, I don't care yeah. what position that we're in, you know, draft wise or whatever. You want to see them win and you see them fuck up. You're like, what the fuck? I'm just, yeah. I feel that PTSD of Frank Reich. It's just it comes on every Sunday. I'm like, oh my god, these guys are the you know he's gonna fuck us up. He's he's gonna make us lose another game because of a bad of some sort of mismanagement. Which winning winning three three out of five with this team against these teams that we're playing, it's, that's pretty damn good. Like I'm giving him his flowers as well. Yeah, uh, I mean you guys haven't played slouch teams necessarily, so. Um... Especially with some of the uh, the folks that have been decent surprises in our division, and Tennessee probably doing their best road performance of the season. They haven't won a road game since <clears throat> since like week six last year or something. Yeah, it, it, I think in I think in a week or two it's supposed to be like a full calendar year until their last road win. Um, they they hadn't lost to Indianapolis in Indianapolis since 2018. And the last time before that that they lost to Indianapolis was Philip Rivers on Thursday night. Uh, I remember in, that in Tennessee, the block so, punt in the back of the end zone. Yep, yep. So I um, mean, a lot of a lot of monkeys are off the back right now. Uh, you got to imagine the Jim Irsay, who's been trying to be a Titan killer for the last several years, is grinning ear to ear right now, and probably singing his favorite song. I don't know what it is, but. He's probably some sort of it. some sort of like seventies <laughs> rock. Yeah, and he, he, it's it's fine that I don't know what it is because he probably also doesn't know the lyrics and is just drunkenly rambling. Yeah, yeah. He's um, probably gonna, probably going to call a giant concert. Just oh, it's is, he's definitely have a going to have a concert during the game next week as <laughs> it's like a fan experience, <laughs> which is no another monkey. Thing. Yeah, another monkey they got to get off their back. They're going to Jacksonville. Mm. I have I've been gifted tickets. I was on strike against going to Jacksonville, but now 
I was gifted tickets. So I'm like, I, well, I have to go. It was Chiefs fan money. So I hope that will break the curse possibly because yeah. the Chiefs were able to win there. Um, nice. But we got to gotta hope to get that monkey off their back. This yeah. it can't go on. It can't go on for much longer, right? It's impossible. Right. <laughs> I mean, you're, you're right. Um, the I think I think the Jaguars fan on my show will be at that game. So oh. I don't know. If you, yeah. So I don't know if you guys like even know each other remotely, but I should that, probably you guys to that was the first up. time I met him. Oh, OK. OK. So I'll try to get you guys to link up or something. But um, yeah. yeah, I mean, the I, the Colts are in a good position to take that monkey right off and yeet it back into the tree. But uh, the Jags are looking good. The Jags, you know, staying in in London, getting two wins over the that's Falcons big. and the Bills. That's that's huge. They're three and two, just like y'all. And uh, because they beat y'all, they're actually ahead of you in the division. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, which we can talk about Jacksonville. Well, Tennessee's the saddest one, so we can end with them. Um, <laughs> Jacksonville. I mean, they're. I think they're more the definition of schizophrenic in this division. Um, yeah. Because holy shit, like they, I don't think they look good at all against Atlanta. I feel like if Atlanta just took out Ritter and put in Heineke, they would have won that game. Cause you know, it was, I think it was a much closer game than the score really kind of showed. Um, yeah. But them going, they get, they got Buffalo's number too. That's got to be something. Cause I remember they beat them a couple years ago, a couple years ago, or was it last year? I think it was a couple years ago. It was like six to nine or something. It was, I remember it was a really low scoring game. Um, and Trevor Lawrence, I mean, he's not, he hasn't been the fur the number one pick. I would say that. I think their defense has really showed out. Um, it's definitely been a much better showing from their defense. Oh yeah. Today. I mean, that's kind of been the thing all season with Jacksonville. There's they're in their defense, I think is a top 10 unit. I think might might be like top seven or something overall. Like they, they usually this season, it's not the offense that's usually killing people. Mm -hmm. Like they're really good at pass, pass rush win rate and a bunch of other little, you know, indicators of success. But this Jacksonville defense, they're the real deal. They're, uh, they're showing up every week and they're shutting down the run game and they're able to get after the passer and they're, they're giving teams hell, but you know, it's the games they're losing. Trevor Lawrence and the offense have looked pedestrian, and the offensive line in every game has been very, very questionable. Uh, I, I don't know if it's people taking steps back or playing out of position and they're just trying to make things work, but uh, Trevor Lawrence has been the most pressured quarterback, if I'm not mistaken. Rick, even more than. <laughs> more than Stroud. Yeah, no, Stroud's actually because he didn't get sacked this week. Uh, that makes three weeks in a row he's not been sacked. He's been pressured a fair amount, but yeah, uh, Lawrence. I, I mean, just watching the game today, every single play he gets the snap, he hits his drop, the final step of his drop, and then he has to take off and like run through the pocket a little bit because somebody's getting through. It's it's been the same story every single week the Colts were able to get after him the Texans mm -hmm. were able to get after him that's that's kind of the way to get to the Jags is create a lot of pressure and chaos on that offensive line and so far they're not answering that call but Trevor Lawrence despite that has been very very accurate and very on the money when it comes to actually being able to get the ball off um so Jacksonville, they're sitting about middle of the pack right now. They've they're averaging twenty one points a game. Um, Houston is just behind Indianapolis. Houston's at twenty three, tied with Chicago. Yes, Chicago with twenty three points a game, and then the Colts are twenty four point no. Houston or Tennessee, sorry. Um, keep thinking the Oilers. Uh, <laughs> Tennessee is seventeen. 0.6 points per game by far worse than the division yeah um, kind of surprised i guess I, I feel like jacksonville's offense would have been lower i mean you would 
think that that's possible because of the Falcons game and they really only scored like the one touchdown in there. Mm -hmm. Um, But I mean, pretty much through the rest of the games, it's, it's been the offense scoring points. It's just not usually been enough. I mean, they put up uh, 17 on 20 shit. Was it 37 to 20 or 37 to 17 against the Texans? And um, they put up what 30 something against the Colts. 31, yeah. 31, 21 was the final. Yeah. They're actually yardage wise. They're number eight too. They're yeah. right behind Minnesota. Um, and then they're ahead of Houston and the Colts. It, it goes Colts, Texans, Jaguars. Makes um, sense. You know, the AFC South just representing well. Mm-hmm. I mean, How look, we a- we, the AFC South's been playing hot. They've been playing hot. When we're on, we're on. Yeah. We're on. I don't want to hear anybody talking shit about the AFC South no more. No, no. But uh, we don't I think have a one. Time, go ahead. Oh, we, we, we don't have a four loss team. It's gorgeous. I know. Dude, and God bless America. That means good football is happening. And <laughs> for the longest time in this division, that has not been the case. <laughs> um, God, thank, thank God for that. Um, yeah, the, uh, the Jags are going to have to figure some things out. They got uh, some questions at left guard, and they, they moved the guy who was playing at left tackle in Cam Robinson's absence walker little they moved him into left guard and then they've been letting anton harrison play right tackle and anton harrison he's been all right but he's he's let up some key pressures at different times and uh i imagine walker little wasn't exactly a perfect fit at left guard for this week at least but you know they need time to gel and they keep changing the pieces and with time the jags and duval nation will be uh, as I predicted early in the off season that they're it's their division to lose. I think they're going to do just fine despite their offensive line woes early on. I have an opinion on Will Levis that it's, it's, it's not great right now because of, you know, he's playing pretty well. I would say, um, I think his deep ball does not look good. I think a lot of people say his, his spiral looks awesome, that it's a beautiful spiral. I don't like it. I think that thing looks like it's going to fall right out of the air and into the defender's hands. Maybe it's just me, but I don't like the spiral. I don't think it looks good. He's been great for two games, but when you look at the three three touchdown game to D Hop, right? Two mm-hmm. of those passes, I think, were pretty bad passes. One was a clear OPI on D Hop. The other one was way underthrown, I think, and D Hop had to make an adjustment to go get it. The other one was a drop in the bucket. Um, but he hasn't really shown like the typical quarterback things. Now he's able to win, but there isn't a lot of tape on the guy in the NFL. And I wouldn't be shocked if in the next few weeks, he really comes back down to earth. Yeah. I mean, the Titans too, like, are they going back to Tannehill? I mean, this is permanent, right? I mean, we'll love us. They, they can't go back. I mean, they can't, he was horrible. I I think so. I mean, you know, but then this is now this turns into kind of a rebuild, doesn't it? A little bit kind of growing pains. What do we call this? What are the, what are the Titans? Are they in transition? Well, are, they, are they rebuilding? What? You get rid of Bayard, right? And I think that was like a, okay, they're, they're completely resetting. They're hitting the reset button. They're, they're tearing the whole damn thing down at the end of the year of Rabel might get fired. Um, and then he could go be the DC for, for Belichick. Um, but I feel like, you know, they didn't deal Henry and everyone thought they're going to deal Henry. It's they're they're just kind of like, I don't want to do it, but they, they just need to rip the bandaid off. It's, it's time. This team is, I mean, you're three and five at this point, you've lost to the Colts who you beat them seven straight games. And now you lost to them and you lose to the Steelers team. That's not very good, but they just find ways to win. Is there really much left to play for for this Titans team at this point? Because you're definitely not winning a Super Bowl. Yeah, they're not winning a Super Bowl. They're they're just kind of yeah, they're in a weird state. And it's not quite like baseball where you know you could trade a guy and get like a few good prospects and you know who those prospects are. I mean, in football, it's you trade them for these picks and you don't know who those picks are gonna be. 
could be yeah. some guy who blows out his ACL and is never the same. So this idea, you know, we trade Henry and is that the way that you start a rebuild? I guess maybe if you get a first round pick for him, that's pretty good. But yeah, it's, it's a shame. It's a shame because it felt like the Titans were close. It felt like they yeah. were close. And if they had someone, you know, step in at the quarterback position and elevate above Tannehill, they might've had a chance to win the whole thing, but you just knew that you just knew he wasn't going to be the guy, but Hey, I just saw a thing on uh, as a headline. We want a little side bars on ESPN. It was Steelers are good at nothing except winning the game. That's well at the end of the day. That's all you got to do. Right. Pretty well said. And, you know, I think, I really think Titans fans are going to look back on that AJ, AJ Brown trade and think what the fuck were yeah, they doing? Well, that was supposed I, to be part of a rebuild and that hasn't done much for him. So, I mean, you would have thought he, he could have been a big help. You would think in the last three years, how long has he been in Philly? Three seasons now? Um, I want to say just two, right? I think last two. year when they got him or was he there in 2021? I, I, I feel like he, it's just last year. Uh, and you know, that that's what elevated the Eagles. Yeah. I mean, he went to the Eagles just last year. So he was a Titan for three years through 21. Um, and you know, the Eagles were a nine and eight team in 2021 that got hammered in the wild card game by the bucks. They had AJ Brown. And I'm not saying it was just AJ Brown, but that was a big reason that they took that leap to Super Bowl team last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, even last year, you look at the Titans, they missed the playoffs. I think AJ Brown could have been a big help for them. Sure. You really could have. They, you know, he could have put them over the top just to not lose that many games, you know, down the stretch. Um, but I think Titan, yeah, Titans fans are gonna be thinking about that for a long time. Uh let's go to the Germany game. I'm sick and tired of the international games. I'm yeah, already right. sick of them. The yeah. the first, oh, I think nice. when they have two and they're spread out. I'm happy with them. It's fine. It's a, it's a cool little thing. You get a little treat in the morning. It's too many. I don't care about bringing the international market, bring the NFL Europe back. That's what I care about. Right. Um, the Chiefs only put up 14 offensive points. Is, yes. is this a sign for panic yet? Yeah. Um, by the way, I agree with you on the international games. 2006 was the last year that – went through an NFL season, didn't have a game played outside of the United States. Colts won the Super Bowl that year, by the way. Colts are playing in Germany next week. Um, cause for concern? No. Um, I looked at it and I was like, well, first of all, of course, how ironic that Tyree kills fumble wins a game for the Chiefs. That was the difference in the game. Mm -hmm. um, they're not quite the same explosive offense right now, the Chiefs, but the Dolphins, I looked at the Dolphins. I take more away from it for Miami. Right. You could say, well, Miami beat Denver 70 to 20 and then Denver beat the Chiefs last week. So how come Miami couldn't beat the Chiefs? Well, the NFL doesn't work that way. Miami's three losses have been to elite teams. And there's two schools of thought. You say, well, do you lose to good teams and maybe you're still good because it's OK. Those are excusable losses. I kind of feel almost the opposite because they've kind of like, even today, you looked at 21 to 14. Miami kind of got flattened. It was an ugly, ugly first half. Mm -hmm. Pass protection was a problem. They got hammered by Philadelphia, and they really got hammered by the Bills. Philly, Philly, them. they were in that game. Their penalties really killed them. They, I think they really, and Philly had no penalties. If I'm, if I'm correct. Well, okay, so maybe I, I, my memory was fuzzy on that one. But they lost that game by 14 points, yeah. and penalties killed them today. Sacks mm -hmm. and penalties, and so to me, that's always coaching. And, and it's a sign that you have problems on your offensive line. And we already knew that because Tua Tagovailoa is, you know, it's a hazard risk. And the Chiefs are just the, – the Chiefs are the Steelers, but better. They're, they find ways to win and they're good, right? And it's like I'm looking at the AFC and I see, oh, okay, Miami's got six wins and Buffalo's supposed to be pretty good. Cincinnati's supposed to be pretty good. And the Jags are six and two. And I know the Ravens are playing well. But it just feels like – all that other stuff is noise, and then there's just the Chiefs. And so until I see somebody really like a good team, a contending team, go in and kick the stuffing out of the Chiefs, or I mean, that's kick the stuffing. I know Denver beat them last week. That just felt like one of those weird. Like, well, yeah, I mean, you look at it. Mahomes was sick, and I know a lot of people don't like to use that excuse, but when when you're the Super Bowl champions, you've won it twice in the last five years. You've been there so many times. I think you do earn the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. 
Of course. And and Mahomes had never lost a division road game. So it was just at some point that was going to happen and Denver's playing better. So, um, but it, it still feels like the chiefs are on their own plane in the AFC. It may not be that much higher now. It may be a little more, the, the, the app may have closed a little bit, but they just, again, they just find a way Miami and two is still, it may, it may kept them in the game, but they both quarterbacks were under 200 yards. I mean, we were like thinking, oh, Dolphins, Chiefs, this could be like 41 to 38. What a fun game this is going to be. And each team scored two offensive touchdowns and both quarterbacks had. And, and maybe there's something in under 200 yards. Both Maybe there's something to this, you know, playing at 930 in Germany. I mean, this game at Arrow, you wonder, and I'm not saying it would have been different, but if they played this game at Arrowhead Stadium, of course, you got to have the Tyreek Hill story. Would have been fun to see him, you know, with the crowd and all that, number one. And two, you wonder if this that game – would have been like 31 to 28 if played at Arrowhead on a Sunday at four o'clock Eastern. You know what I mean? And it's, it just, you're, you're, you're you're, like the NFL has beyond watered down. And I feel for guys like you that are, are, this is more like the time you're growing up watching football. And to me, it was 15, 20 years ago. And it was just, it just feels different now. And you're right. The international games, that's a bad thing. That Thursday night football, if I could have two wishes when it comes to football, get rid of probably both of the well on 17 games of course i'm 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 perfectly fine with thursday night football i think honestly it's more taken over monday night football monday night football is a historic thing i think it has to be there no matter what but the the thursday night football games have been a lot better than the monday night games just in matchup quality i think just even preseason matchup quality you look at some of these monday night games like what the fuck are they thinking when they're putting these teams together um but you do look at the sunday night game last week even even preseason, who thinks of Chicago and, and L.A. in L.A. being the, the game? I mean, you had the 49er game, 49ers, Bengals, two Super Bowl, preseason Super Bowl contenders. You could have put them there. I mean, there, there was a few other games you could have put over a non-rivalry game in a city that literally does not care. They don't give a fuck about football. Um, but whatever. Uh, I... I I want to get back to the Chiefs because the international, I just can't stand it. Get rid of the international games. Fuck them. They're horrible. Um, there's no there's no formula to succeed in the international games. Miami got there late. They got there early. They came out flat. The Chiefs got there late. They came out, and they were actually a little hot to start. You know, they went up 21 nothing. Kansas City's earned the benefit of the doubt for me. That Until they lose, they will always be the favorite in my book. They will always be that. And even, you know, they'll, they'll always be a top five team because you have Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey, two uh, probably top three combination tight end quarterback, I would say, um, of all time. I mean, there's obviously Brady and Gronk and, you know, Tony Gonzalez never really had that Hall of Fame quarterback to, to be considered a, a top combination. Um, I, I mean, you look at Miami. This is, I mean, it's a problem. They're they're on fraud watch here. My, I mean, Mike McDaniel, especially at the end of the game, he freaks out. I think he, I think his play calling freaks out because they run the ball well. Raheem Mostert, 12 for 85. He was averaging 7.1. On that final drive, he had a 25-yard rush and a 19-yard rush to get him into Kansas City field goal range. He had um, just over a minute, two timeouts, and you don't run the ball at all after that. You try to throw it four times in a row. Yeah, and about that too. Yeah. And, and how about, you know, you're, you're going to be a competent football team and you're playing another big team and you lose the game on a fumbled fourth down snap. I mean, yeah. Not a and and I mean, to a, to a missed a touchdown because he, the ball flew at like slipped out of his hand. What the fuck was that throw? I mean, the thing went 10 yards short. I know. And I'm a Tua apologist. I think he's actually better than, than a lot of people expect. I don't think he's the MVP anymore. I think this was the game that says you're not the MVP because this was a big game. This was a very big game and they lose this. I mean, you just, you know, you could possibly get the number one seed over the chiefs. If you win this game, you're probably going to win the division who in the AFC East. I mean, Buffalo is right there, but they're not, they're really not. Let's, let's have that conversation. Not yet, but Buffalo is not there. Yeah. The, the, Chiefs are the new Patriots. I mean, just whatever, however you would see the Patriots winning games for two decades. It's just, this is what, this is exactly what 
the Patriots would do. It, it and just... I know, I know, especially though the Patriots, because everybody is dancing on their graves, acting like their season's over. When they lost to Denver, people were saying, "Oh, Mahomes is done. Mahomes is horrible." We did the same thing with Tom Brady. I don't, I don't understand why we're doing it. I don't understand why we can't just learn from our mistakes. But the Chiefs are going to be there in wishful January. Thinking. Of course, it's wishful and, thinking. Yeah, they, they, yeah, the Patriots never lost. Would never. I mean, never. But rarely lose two in a row. They don't lose after five. I mean, they the and they don't lose division games. They never lost division games, and the Chiefs barely lose division games. Right, right, and and it's the other teams just make mistakes, and they would the Patriots would wait to capitalize. And again, the AFC. A lot of these teams have just been so mediocre for so long that the, the door is open if there is a team that has that elite quarterback coach combo to just dominate the conference. Can't don't see it in the NFC, but you see you've seen it in the AFC since basically the turn of the century. I think if you look at the great teams, the first thing those teams are able to do is dominate the division. Mm-hmm. Those are six free wins right there. You basically start. You start the season knowing, okay, we're at least going to win five to six games. That is the standard, basically. And then you go through, you look at, okay, well, we're playing this other division. We're playing two of these teams suck. There you go. There's seven, eight wins. I mean, you just keep adding up these wins that are almost like automatics for these teams. No matter how, no matter like on their level of good, like, you know, maybe the Chiefs have a little bit of a down year, but they're still good. They're still going to win their division games. That's what good teams do. They win their division games. And that's what the Chiefs uh, do. That's what the Pats did. I wasn't alive for for the Niners, but I'm sure when the Niners had their run, that's exactly what they did. Mm -hmm. This is, they are the Patriots, and I'm never going to doubt them. This was a shitty stretch for them, but they're going to find their way back easily. Um, Let's move to probably the second best game of the day. Um, Best feel-good story, in my opinion. Josh Dobbs comes in. After he gets off the plane, walks into the stadium, he's the backup. Starter goes out. They say, Dobbs, you're fucking in, dude. And he wins the game. He's Superman. And you can't help but think. The 2017 Vikings lost their starter midway through the season. Case Keenum came in, and he took them to the NFC Championship. Now, this Vikings team was 0-3 to start the season. They're 5-4 and now. They're 4-1 in their last five i mean is it possible can we look at that team and say hey you know josh dobbs might be the guy to get them there well josh dobbs is uh undefeated all time in postseason games he's zero and zero kirk cousins <laughs> has what one postseason win as vikings quarterback i don't know i mean the bar now is so low and you, you bring in Josh Dobbs. The numbers weren't great. I mean, and early on, it was pretty ugly. He gave up a safety. It was a sack mm-hmm. early in the game. It was like 5-3. Then it was 8-3. And it was 11-3. It was like this, this did not profile as the game of the day or one of the games of the day. But uh, but the Vikings, you know what? The Vikings went out. They got Cam Akers. And he, had, he hasn't really done all that much. But he actually got a sack today. <laughs> Tried to throw a pass. Um, but <laughs> the Vikings now they win a close game. They come from behind on the road. Here's the thing: the Lions are what six and two, seven and two, six and two, I think. Or have um, a bye, or have a bye week. They are on their bye this week. It looks it looked like the Lions were just going to coast to the division, but the Lions and Vikings have yet to face each other. So there's a chance that the Vikings can actually make a race of the NFC North. And uh, and I think it's a great story for Josh Dobbs because you know what? As bad as the Cardinals' record was, Dobbs didn't play terribly there, you know? He's got a win against no. Dallas under his belt. Of course, it's the Cardinals' only win. And he has a win now in his first start as a Viking. And I, I just look at the other side, and this was such an Atlanta loss. If you could say, well, Josh Dobbs comes in, he wins his first start – who is it against? Oh, it was Atlanta, and they had a lead late in the game. All right, of course they did. Well, this is the, this is the Spider-Man meme, the, the pointing Spider-Man meme. Yeah. Because these two franchises are the exact same. Pretty much. I mean, you're right. I mean, they've never – neither have won a Super Bowl. Of course, they these teams met to produce one of the great championship games of all time before your time, 1998. Um, Gary Anderson missed field goal game. The Vikings were 15-1 and, and, and ended up – 
uh, you know, losing a lot of people think of that as one of the greatest teams that didn't win a Super Bowl. Atlanta, of course, went on and got their butts kicked by Denver. But the Falcons, like this was such an opportunity for them in a in an NFC South where first place was 500 going into this game. Taylor Heineke comes in threw one bad interception that kind of turned the game. And I, they just I don't know. The Falcons just don't know what to do with a lead. And it felt yeah. like they were they had this game on multiple occasions. And uh, I can't – I mean, I really didn't take them seriously before this game. But had they won it, they're 5-4, and four, and they're in the thick of it in the NFC South, I'd say, oh, you know, and I like Heineke, you know, as I do. But this was just a big missed opportunity for Atlanta. So Yeah, this is a game that you look back on if Atlanta misses out by a game. You look back on it and say this was the game. Yeah. I mean, you look at the backups in. Obviously, the Vikings' original backup was in. You knock them out. Usually, that's a death blow for most teams. I mean, at this point, they're on the third-string quarterback, which is Josh Dobbs. And I was excited when Minnesota got him. He's going to have some better weapons. Um, K.J. Osborne did leave the game, but Alexander Madison had a big game today. And then when you get Jefferson back, assuming he's going to want to come back, um, that's going to be another weapon for him. But, you know, Atlanta, you're, you're a game back now when you could be tied. And it was the most Atlanta way to lose. Um, the only other team I think you compare them to is the Chargers, when, when the Chargers and the Falcons played a few years ago. Yeah, um, but these that, two – That's the Spider-Man meme, yeah. Yeah. This is the NFC Spider-Man meme, and right. I, I would love to see them play again in the NFC Championship just because, for my own sick mind, it would be hilarious. Um, but now you're five – your five loss Atlanta team at this point, if you have five losses, it's difficult. You're not, you're probably not winning a division. You have to really think about that. I mean, I don't know if you're going to win that division, even if it's the NFC South, that's going to be a tough one to win. Um, so this is the one you miss out on. That's just, it's going to be tough to swallow. Uh, John U. Smith was also the leading receiver when you have three first round picks on offense. And Arthur Smith is this offensive genius. Yeah, right. Come on, man. Get get three of those guys in the mix. Like Tyler Algier, Algier I think, was their leading uh, rusher today. We got to talk about what happened today. The Bucks, the Bucks game? Yeah, they, they lost to the Colts. It was hilarious. Um, no problem. The Colts were kind of toying with them anyway. No, I, I mean, the, I, the Colts were incompetent. They, they looked incompetent. It was not a convincing win, in my opinion. Yeah, I actually thought the Bucks played pretty well. At least the that second quarter, I would say they you know started bringing things back, get things rolling for once. They actually looked like a team that could run the ball for a couple of plays. Um, but yeah, and they really needed that win if they wanted like any playoff chance. Yeah, Rashad White looked unstoppable for a little while, and then he just wasn't yeah for some reason like they wouldn't touch him like they wouldn't some somebody was somebody's talking outside my door but um yeah uh they just stopped running it i didn't understand why um i honestly did think at the end of the half or near the end of the fourth quarter i was like oh the colts are gonna lose this game this is a game the colts lose all the time they're up big they let the Bucks get back into it, playing for event. Except we we had a, a sack fumble, which was awesome. So um, mm-hmm. strip sack. We have the most strip sacks in the league, apparently, which is kind of crazy. I didn't know that. Um, but we're really missing Grover Stewart. We need Grover Stewart back in a few weeks. So, uh, but yeah. as of right now, and up until I think Thursday of of this week, the Indianapolis Colts are the number seven seed in the in the NFL playoffs. Um, and if the season ended right now, if Roger Goodell said we're not playing any more football right now, if there was some sort of major tragedy on American soil and they cancel the season, the Colts would be going to the playoffs right now. Let's not forget that. The Colts are in the playoffs right now. So, you know, if that happened at week four, you know, the Bucks would be like the second seed or something. I think if it happened at week two, <laughs> week three, I want to say yeah, week three, week three, the Colts yeah. would be the Colts would have won the division. So <laughs> listen, but that, that's why we play 17 games. 
but we play 17. But it's a good win for the Colts. So it's a great win. It feels good. I kind of you could have predict. I honestly could have predicted the Bucks losing this game because they came from the West Coast. They're pretty banged up already. I think they're going into the bye. I want to say this week. No, we already um, had our bye. Ours was early. Oh, it was. Yeah, I think week five was our bye week. Are you sure about that? Yeah. Let me see. Let me see. I am a diehard. Oh yeah, they do play the Panthers. Bucks fan, so I should know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Um, actually, the Colts will stay in the seven seed through Sunday morning because it's an NFC matchup for Thursday Night Football. So, even better that the Colts get to have a playoff spot. But honestly, Colts make the playoffs. And that's going to extend Chris Ballard's time in Indianapolis by that's like two years. Feeling. And I don't need that. I need somebody who's going to go out and spend money. Who's going to go out and spend all the money they have. Mm-hmm. But I know Jim Irsay won't let it happen. So either way, I'm fucked. So we might as well just make the playoffs and it'll be fun. Um, and the Bucks, you got to get rid of Wolves. It's time. Well, they're going to let it play out. They're going to let out the rest of the seat. They're going to let the rest of the season yeah. play out. Because they're like, fuck it, we're done. Um, Baker Mayfield dropping his shoulder into linebackers today is both the dumbest and the funnest thing I've ever seen, and it's ridiculously stupid. My God. I can't believe in the first half of that game that they were on the one-yard line and could not get one yard. Yeah. In fact, they got like negative 15. (laughs) Well, they had like a sure touchdown, I think, on that first. Well, because I was watching the game on my phone. Like I watched like the first drive on my phone, mm-hmm. and then I got to where I was watching the game, and yeah. it like because looked like, could, oh man, the Bucks are going to run us like over. A, they went for just a QB sneak up the middle. Baker Mayfield gets hurt, and then they put <laughs> Kyle Trask in for the next three downs, and he doesn't do anything. And it's like if there's any team that's known for rushing for one yard. It's the freaking Bucks. Just send Rashad White up the middle three times. He's going to get that one yard. Yeah. But. Yeah. And I, I think the Colts defensive coordinator should be fired too. He's fucking horrible. He, <laughs> he never blitzes. He never blitz. I mean, you feel like he rarely blitzes. It's crazy. And we have like one of the best pass rushes in the league. But mm-hmm. whatever. Don't listen to me. I'm stupid. I'm dumb. I don't know anything. Um, the Eagles also won today. Layton's favorite team because they're 10 and one right now um mm-hmm. are the eagles the super bowl favorite right now because i don't think so who else would be uh the 49ers nah, eagles on the 49ers i'm just trying to rile you up i actually do think the eagles are the best team in the league right now because <laughs> they've won all close games good teams can beat the shit out of really bad teams and they can go in and just beat the shit out of everybody but really good teams know how to win close games against good and bad teams. You're battle tested. I agree. I wish that they had more clean wins, but it's like, especially in um, this season where it's like, you've got teams like the chiefs or Ravens or 49ers, these other teams that are really good, but like, the chiefs are losing games that they should not lose. So when, you know, push comes to shove, I would anticipate they're not going to win those late playoff matchups. Oh, the Chiefs are back. The Chiefs are back. I'm I'm telling you the Chiefs are back right now. I watched the game. I watched the whole game. They're absolutely back. They're back. No, their offense is back. Is Taylor Swift Um, there? Travis Kelsey put up some fantasy points for me for once. Yeah, Travis had a good day without Taylor, which I didn't know that was possible. But Mm. um, Taylor, I don't know what Taylor's doing, but Congrats to Travis, I guess. You you proved that Taylor didn't make you. Right? She didn't she didn't create Travis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, and either... I'm sitting I'm sitting there with Kyron Kyron Williams as well on my fantasy team. Both my he teams. He had fucking actually. 50 points today, I'm pretty sure. I got he got 45 in our league. And I'm so glad my team is finally popping off just in time for me to miss the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I'm fuck, I'm going to be 3-10. and 10. I'm going to be 3-10. and 10, I think so. I still owe you my $30. I don't think yeah, I you do. I think. 
I think, um, yeah, I'll it's not good. It it's 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 not a it's not a good fantasy should season just, for me. Should I just send it straight to your dad? <laughs> no, he's got he's got a tough matchup this week coming up. He's playing me, not a tough matchup. But next week he's got a tough matchup against. Please the number two upset team. him. We have to upset because if I win, I have three more games left. If I win those three, I'll end seven and seven. There's the slimmest possibility that I might be able to tie fourth place and overtake them based off of <laughs> whatever the – if it's points four, I think I'd win that maybe. I have kind of a low points four. I have the highest points what against. The tie is. I have the highest points against in that league. Yeah. Well, um, anyways, no matter what happens, it's a good day of football. <laughs> I mean, listen, that, that Eagles Bills game was like game of the, uh, that was not game of the year, but it was like instant classic. It's going to be top mm-hmm. five games of, of the year. Yeah. Great game. Fantastic game. You could just feel the Bills were going to lose that. Um, but it was a great day of football, no matter what happens. Um, also, anybody listening, go follow us on Threads. I know it sounds cringe. It sounds really cringe. Yeah. But Alex is on there some blowing it up all by himself. We're fucking blowing up. Get him we're some blowing likes. It up. We're build, building a real community. So getting, arguments, on. getting in arguments, too. Getting accused of being a Chiefs fan. Yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> I went in there and I liked all of your comments. So Hell yeah, brother. At least you no, know. I mean, that guy was a moron, so I don't. I don't know. He he said the he said that Mahomes glazing is crazy, which it is. But that throw that he had on Monday night against Can- against Philly, in that situation on like third and fifteen, he throws it fifty yards in the air, drops it into the breadbasket, and it's just dropped. Like that's a throw of the year under pressure too. That was a great mm-hmm. throw. 